Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I am back this week, and uh, I actually have my book club book to share with you this time. So, uh, if you don't know how we do our book club, we each submit, there's five of us, we're friends, it's fine. We each submit four books that we want to read, and then we roll a die to see which one we're going to read. And so, this time was A Good Neighborhood by Teresa Ann Fowler. So... This had been on my radar, it was already on my shelf, and so it wasn't my pick actually, but I had already had an interest in it, so that was fine. But um, I guess in all the things that I saw about this book, I didn't actually read too much of what this book was about, other than it was like a rich white family built this like mega home on this lot, and uh, they have problems with the people behind them, which is Valerie and her son is Xavier, who is biracial, but like six foot three, slightly darker skinned, which I feel like tells you everything about where this book is going. But um, yeah, the first paragraph, this is a kind of a mild spoiler, I guess, the first paragraph tells you about a funeral. So the, the I should say that the the person telling us about this is multiple viewpoints, so it tells us, like, from a lot of our characters, as well as, like, the neighborhood itself tells us things. So it's at the start when the neighborhood tells us about a funeral. So this is all gonna end in a funeral. Right off the bat, like, first fucking paragraph, that can't be considered a spoiler. <laughs> it's, it's the spoiler it gives you. So, um, many, many times while reading this book, I was just like, I hope this white fucking asshole who built this mega home and is just like the epitome of white privilege is the motherfucker who's gonna die. But like I said, I knew in my heart it's not gonna happen because that's not kind of the kind of book this is. So, it all kind of starts because this mega home threatens a tree in Valerie's yard, this like hundred year old, I wanna say, I don't know what kind of tree it was, I don't remember now. <laughs> But it's this like huge wonderful big canopy tree that like is threatened by this home because it's disturbed the roots and like it's it's part of the family for her and I totally fucking get it because there is a tree in my yard it is huge and lovely it's taller than my house I fucking love it it's a great little tree it's a huge tree but my neighbor hates it and I would literally chain myself to that fucking tree if he tried to like harm it <laughs> so I totally get Valerie's perspective on this tree, which I think a lot of people are just like, it's a fucking tree. It's not just a fucking tree, okay. So she, uh, she's widowed and this tree has gotten her through a lot, you know? It's that kind of thing, you know? But, um, as one will do, the teenagers start having a little, little affair and, you know, epitome of white privilege Brad over there doesn't take kindly to that. And, you know, garbage shit happens. But, um, there is some cringe, some, like, super cringe out of Brad at one point in this book where it's just kind of like, ew, Brad, like, I didn't like you before, I like you even less now. That kind of garbage. But, um, what actually hit me the hardest wasn't, you know, the cringe or the tree or any of that kind of stuff or, like, Valerie being widowed and like any any of that kind of character stuff it's like um a, it's like a page and a half a couple of paragraphs where it's Valerie worrying about her son because she knows what's happening in the world you know he, he's six foot three and like yeah he's a good kid he's on the honor roll he plays classical um guitar you know, he's he's a good kid, but because of the way he looks, she knows that he's kind of like always gonna be in in trouble, in danger. And so it's a it's a page and a half approximately of all these news stories that we've seen and the videos we've seen where like white people call the cops on black people for simply existing in this world. And I remember going through every single one of them and I was just like, yep, I remember that. I remember that. I saw that. I read that. And it just, I think that's what kind of like hit me. And I was like, fuck, this book is going to be way too fucking real for me. 
And this book is way so fucking real. Like, there's a lot of books where you read and you're like, well, that'll never happen. Like, oh, there's a little bit of, like, you know, magical realism, fantasy, whatever kind of thing going here. Like, this isn't how the world works. This book is exactly how the world works. And so, like, that, that kind of just, like, sat really heavy on me for a while. Where I was like, shit. I just realized where this book is actually going to go. So, yeah. Like, there is, there is one more thing I want to say before I, I give you my rating for this book. Um, I discussed this with my book group. My book, my edition of this book has an author's note at the front of the book. Normally author notes, you know, back of the book, you know, acknowledgements, thank yous, that kind of thing. This one was at the front of my book, but it wasn't at the front of all of my friends' books, and some of them read the audiobook and they didn't hear it at all. So there is an author's note. The author is white, and she kind of touched on, is this a story that she's allowed to write? Because it is, you know, between a black family and a white family and, like, racial tension and all the kind of stuff that comes with that. So, <sighs> she she's like, hey, I recognize that maybe this wasn't my place. I talked to a bunch of people. I talked to, you know, scholars and editors and other authors. And, like, I, I discussed what my plan was and whether it was appropriate for me to do it. And I kind of, like, got the go-ahead and, like... I tried to treat it so respectfully and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, wow, I've never read this from an author before who's like, I know maybe not my place, but here's what's up. And I was just like, that, that made me feel better about it. Cause it was like, there have been some books in the past few years where it's kind of like, is this your story to tell? You know? But I feel like the intersection of literally everybody and the neighborhood in this book makes it acceptable. It does. It's not solely just like, say, Valerie's story or Xavier's story. It is sort of everyone's story. And I think she handled it so well. And it was so nice. And that's why I'm ha actually having a problem with my rating. And I discussed this with my book group too. We all kind of had like a same thing was like, is it a four star read? Is it a five star read? Is it somewhere in between? I don't even know. So I'm making up my own rating, which is four star plus. I waver thinking about this book, what I actually want to rate it. And I don't know if I can like, like it just, it did touch me so much that I'm like, is it, is it five? Is it four? Am I being blinded by something? And it's, you know, Goodreads doesn't give you half stars yet. <laughs> but yeah, it was just... It's an amazing book. I mean, at first I didn't realize it was the neighborhood narrating some parts to us, and that threw me off a little, but like, otherwise... It's a pretty amazing book. I'm probably actually gonna give it five stars on Goodreads. I haven't rated it yet, officially. I'll probably give it five. I really do recommend people read this book. It is, it is a wonderful book. Don't forget to like and subscribe.